This is the story of the birth certificate of a railroad. Not the story of the Santa Fe as we know it today, but simply the notation on the back of its birth certificate. Its infant smiles and tears, its struggle to survive. Now, in just a moment, we'll tell you about it. But first, here's Gain Whitman. This year, winter sports have grown increasingly more popular. More popular, too, are all the new models of outdoor sportswear, which carry the tag that reads, Fabrics Treated with DuPont Zelan. There's good reason for this wide use of Zeland durable water repellent. Outdoor enthusiasts know that garments made of fabric treated with Zeland give continuing satisfaction because they afford protection against snow and rain even after many washings or cleanings. Zeland, it's one of the DuPont Company's better things for better living through chemistry. <laughs> And now Ralph Bellamy as Cyrus Holliday and Louise Albritton as Mary in The Prairie Burner on the DuPont Cavalcade of America. It's the year 1866, just outside a frontier town in Kansas. The prairie, like a gold and russet carpet, stretches unbroken on each side of the rough wagon trail. The only sound to disturb the peacefulness of the morning is the sound of a stagecoach traveling up from the south. Oh, oh, did I say peaceful? Say, that was a rifle shot. Yes, there's a band of cowboys stopping the coach. Keep a hand away from your shooting iron, driver. We ain't aiming for trouble with you less than you ask for it. What's the idea of stopping my coach? We got a little something to say to one of your passengers. You, Holiday. Yes, what concern have you with me, sir? Just this, Mr. Railroad Builder. We're warning you. Keep your blasted berry burners away from our grazing lands, understand? No, I'm afraid I don't understand. You see, mister, we just don't favor railroads in these parts, right, boys? That's right. Oh, you don't, eh? No, and we don't favor railroad builders, neither. So we're giving you the wave around. And you'd better pay it some mind. Now, you listen to me, my friend. I'm leaving for the east. But I'll be back to build a railroad across the desert from Topeka to Santa Fe. And you and all the cattlemen in Kansas won't stop me. Cyrus Holliday, back home in the east, found that the problems of building a railroad were not confined solely to the west. In the year 1867, we find him seated at the dinner table, glowering down at the plate before him. Mary, his wife, gently suggests, Eat your bluefish, dear. Bluefish. Yes, that's what they all are, bluefish. They have as much imagination, as much vision as, as this broiled bluefish. Why, who, Cyrus? Guilford, this crowd, that's who. They think a railroad from Topeka, Kansas to Santa Fe is impractical, and they won't give me a cent's worth of backing. Why, the very idea. Well, we'll use our own money, that's what we'll do. What? <laughs> do you know how much money it takes to build a railroad? No, no, but, but we have about $20,000 in the bank, and <laughs> Mary. I... It takes lots more than 20000 to build a railroad. Lots more, dear. It takes hundreds of thousands, maybe millions. Oh, my. Really, sir? Sure, $20,000 will build no more than maybe 10 or 12 miles of rail, dear. Well, then it's build a 12-mile railroad. That would be throwing money away. No, it wouldn't. Your charter with the government gives you deed to land on each side of the railroad, doesn't it? Yes, if I build a railroad, but... Well, then the... why not build 12 miles of road and sell the land and take the money and build 12 miles more and then take that money and build... Whoa, whoa, whoa there. <laughs> Oh, I suppose you think that's ridiculous, too. Dear, I can't build a railroad with $20,000. Well, you can start one with that, can't you? It just won't work. I just don't see why not. Well, because... Well... Well? Because... Why not? Yes, why not? Why, Jupiter, why not? <laughs> that's what I asked you. By heavens, I'll do it. You hear, Mary? I'll do it. You mean we'll do it, don't you, dear? Because I'm going with you this time. What? Right? You mean to Kansas? Uh-huh, to Kansas. Oh, no. Oh, no, my pet. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, my darling. Mary, I will not hear another word about it. Uh, yes, darling. Uh, that's final. Yes, darling. Now, do eat your bluefish, Cyrus. It's really quite good, dear. <laughs> So this is Topeka. Just one muddy street and two lines of clobbered houses. I shouldn't have allowed you to come. This is no place for... For a decent, respectable woman. Yes, darling. You'd better inquire about Mayor Wyndham's whereabouts. Yes, I understand they built a new city hall since I was here last. 
but none of those buildings look like it. Uh, if you please, sir. Whoa, whoa, Neely. Whoa, up there. Ah, uh, stranger. Can you direct us to the city hall? Sir, that noble edifice across the road the new city hall. Oh, saints above, that shack. Yes, sir, the railroad man, Windy, has been expecting it, you know. Windy? Ah, oh, here's honor the mayor. We call him Windy on the county. He's got heaps of talking talent. <laughs> I see. Yes, I'm the railroad man the mayor's been expecting. Thank you kindly, sir, for your assistance. Be careful of the mud, ma'am, when you cross the road six inches before you hit bottom, I reckon. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I'd better carry you across to the boards, Mary. Oh, how nice, dear. Oops, you do. <clears throat> oh, oh, careful, dear. Don't slip. Do you think for a moment that I'd let such a precious burden fall in the Kansas mud? Uh, Mr. Railroad Man. Yes, my friend. I hear tell you're meaning to build a railroad to Santa Fe. That's right, sir. Right across the desert to Santa Fe. <laughs> I'll be doggone across the desert to Santa Fe. And what's so funny about that, my good man? Oh. Now, now, Cyrus, don't get into a fuss with him. At least carry me out of this mud first. Yes, let him laugh, the confounded... Uh, mister. Yes? Cyrus, please. No skin off my hide, again, but uh, what are you expecting to talk on your railroad, mister? Buffalo bones? Oh. Buffalo bones? Now, let me tell you something. You... Oh, oh, oh. 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 Oh, Sire. Go to heaven. Oh, look at us now. Mr. Halliday, my dear sir, welcome indeed to Topeka. Mayor Wyndham. Oh, dear me, I I fear you've met with a mishap. Uh, Just a little fall in the mud. Oh, may I present my wife, Mayor, Mrs. Halliday. How do you do, sir? May I help you up, madam? Thank you. Upon my word, indeed, a double delight awaits the proud citizens of Topeka. Progress and prosperity, beauty and grace. Indeed, my dear madam, indeed. Well, thank you, sir. This way to the city hall, folks. Uh, uh, Sir, you may count me as your most willing servant. Indeed, sir, your most willing servant. (laughs) Here we are. Enter, please. My uh, chambers. Do uh, sit down, folks. Do sit down. Thank you, Mayor. Now, Mr. Halliday, sir, if I can be of any assistance in my official capacity as mayor of Topeka, you have but to speak, sir. Thank you. However, in truth, sir, I think it best to warn you. There may be a bit of trouble. Trouble? Uh, now, now, nothing to be concerned about, I assure you, madam. Nothing at all. Just uh, Sam Coulter and some of his boys. Sam Coulter? Do you know him, sir? Yes, I met the gentleman on my last trip here. Uh, Sam Coulter, sir, can't abide the sight, smell, sound, or thought of a railroad. In fact, sir, a railroad man, Sam, is lower than... Uh, excuse me, ma'am... A sheep herder. Huh? Oh, oh, goodness me. Yes, uh, sir. It seems Sam had a ranch up north of here. A railroad come along, bringing settlers and, and big pardon, ma'am, sheep herders. They drove his herd off in the free grass. Sam, he fought like all get out, but didn't do him a mighty good. Said he'd rather sell out than have any truck with a railroad. And by George, he did. Yes, sir. Yes, he hates railroads worse than he does a, a, a horse thief. Well, uh, Coulter and all the cattlemen in Kansas aren't going to stop me from running a line to employ you. Oh, there's a man of spirit, madam. Indeed, a man of spirit. <laughs> Might I inquire, sir? I see you don't carry any uh, firearms. Firearms? Well, I'm sure I have a few spare ones around. Yes, yes, here's another good one. Oh, my, what a pretty pearl handle. May I... Just... Hello, hello, put that thing down. Oh, Thank you kindly, Mayor, but I don't think I'll need a gun. Yes, well, perhaps not, sir. Perhaps not. Oh, Cyrus, do take the gun. It has such a pretty pearl handle. Mary, please. Uh, yes, darling. No, I don't think we'll need guns to build the Santa Fe. At least, I hope not. <laughs> to be a railroad builder after all. <laughs> really? Why? Because you might have been a coach road builder and made roads like this and have a little <laughs> hate to... Oh! oh! What on earth was that, sir? It sounded like a pistol shot. Oh, boy! Oh, oh, oh! the coach has stopped. What is it? A uh, hold up? I don't know, but it doesn't seem possible. Oh. 
Don't reach for your shooting arms, Jake Carter. We're no high riders. The gang crew, Big, what's the idea of sending the lead from across my coat? You going hog wire? No harm, man, Jake. Just aiming to stop the coat. Oh, too, Sam Coulter. You've got your slab-sided horse stick. Oh, Jake, you got no call to get your bristles up. Coulter, Silas, isn't that the yes, man? Yes, now, don't worry, dear. What do you want, Coulter? One of your passengers. Come out of that coach, Holliday. If you have anything to say to me, Coulter, say it and let us go on our way. Step down, Holliday. Oh, okay, Sam Coulter. Come here, left, Jake. This ain't no concern of yours. You coming out, Holliday, or do we have to come get you? All right. I'll come out. Oh, no, sir. They might do... Stay in the coach, dear. Don't worry. All right, boys. Let's take them and get a going. What the... Oh, God. The lady's packing a shooting iron, Coulter. You... You step an inch nearer to him and I'll really shoot you. Billy, put that gun down and please let me handle this alone. Ma'am, it won't please me not to make smoke with a woman, so I'm asking you polite like drop that gun. I won't drop this gun, you... You... You sheep herder. Sheep herder? <laughs> That's laying it on to him, ma'am. Ma'am, if you wasn't a lady... If I wish I weren't a lady, <laughs> then I'd really tell you what I think of you. Of all the stupid, short-sighted... Well, don't you realize what a railroad will do for your southwest? It'll build an empire. Yes, a whole new empire out of a desert and prairie. Ma'am, we don't need none of you slick-tongued easterners to tell us how to run our affairs. These are free open ranges, and we aim to keep them that way. Have your say, my friend. I'm listening. Come on, boss. Enough of this chin music. Let's get it. Now, wait a minute, Pete. Holiday, I warned you once. Now, this is the last time. You keep your blasted prairie burners away from our grazing lands, or the only rail you will ride will be one you set a straddle. Come on, boys. Yeah. Well, I, I guess they won't dare bother us again. Not while I've got my pretty pearl handle shooting iron. Melly, dear, give me that gun. Oh, all right, dear. Where in heaven's name did you... Oh, I see. Mayor Wyndham. Yes, darling. I, I just couldn't resist it. it. It has such a pretty pearl handle. Well, I'll keep it myself. If I know Coulter, I'm afraid I'm going to need it. You are listening to Ralph Bellamy and Louise Albritton in The Prairie Burner on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. <laughs> The second part of our story opens a month later. Cyrus Holliday is building a railroad from Topeka to Santa Fe. The rails are being laid in record time. Everything is going well. And then... Just before sundown one day, the first trouble starts. Keep your head down, Mike. Uh, sure, Mr. Holliday, those cowboys ain't the shots they made out to be. The way they're shooting, they... They're aiming high, Mike, on purpose, trying to scare your men into quitting. Quitting? We'll quit we drive the last fight down in Santa Fe. And then a mysterious fire broke out one night in the supply house. Oh, come in, Mike. No use fighting that fire any longer. The sheds are gone. But the railroad ties, Mr. Holliday. I'm afraid there's nothing we can do about them now. Oh, black cross on them. This is going to set us back for a month or more. Yes. And we need that much with the government deadline coming closer every week. And then the rails were torn up almost as fast as they were laid. Mike, tell the operator to get on the keys and raise Kansas City. We'll need a new batch of rails to repair the section they tore up last night. But, Mr. Holliday, sir, are you sure that we have the money to cover it? I don't know, Mike. But one thing I do know, one more setback and we're through. Mr. Holliday, sir. I know, Mike. I know what you came to tell me. The men are all quitting. Well, no, not exactly, sir. Well, I can't say I can blame them. Can't expect them to work without the certainty of being paid. Well, no, sir. Can't as bad as all that. Only about half the hands have quit. Yeah, you might as well tell them all to put down their tools, Mike. Good morning. It looks like Sam Calder wins. Good morning, darling. Morning, dear. Well, what's everyone looking so down in the mouth about? Uh, oh, sure, no, ma'am. There's only the set of my face. Uh... Guess I'd better get back to the men and tell them, Mr. Holliday. Oh, I know. No, now I know. Money. Heavens, as if that were something to worry about. Look what I've got. What? 
3000 in cartwheels and gold. Mary, where did that money come from? From the men, sir. Glo- the first train will be pulling out on the new Santa Fe tracks two weeks from today, and my name ain't Michael O'Day. <laughs> Oh, Jake, must you do that whistle? Oh, just celebrating, Mrs. Harday, ma'am. By God, I never thought Jake Carter would be driving the first iron cayuse on your railroad, Mr. Harday. Never thought anyone would, but the way it looked for a good while. Uh, when do we let it book, Mr. Harday? <laughs> You know as well as I do that nothing gets started around here without a speech from Mayor Wyndham. Ah, time nation. How do you like your new saddle, Jake? Guess driving an iron horse is a little more complicated than a stagecoach, huh? Ma'am, I feel as jittery as a close hobbled horse in fly time. Ah, don't worry, Jake. Mary and I will be riding in the engine with you on this run. <laughs> Mr. Holliday, sir. Oh, Wyndham. Oh, oh, this is a most memorable occasion, man. Ready, sir, for your speech? Yes, sir, I've been ready for weeks. <laughs> ah, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, this day, April 26, 1869, shall go down in the annals of the city of Topeka as the most memorable, the most treasured record in the great unwritten future that. Oh! Jake! Oops, sorry, man. I can see the Santa Fe stretching on and on in all directions. To Galveston, to San Francisco, I even back east to Chicago. I can see the coming tide of immigration flowing along these lines like an ocean wave advance up the side of the foreign Nation, Mr. Harday, never thought we'd pull out of Topeka. Well, it wasn't very nice of you, Jake. You saw the train before Mayor Wyndham had a chance to finish his speech. No, well, he wouldn't want the first train or even late, would you? Reckon he never even missed us. <laughs> wouldn't surprise me in the least if he was still there in his lungs. Uh-oh. Uh, look at there, Mr. Harday. What's wrong? Look what's in front of us across the track there. A herd of cattle. Goodness, I didn't know there were so many cows in the whole world. Yep. Appears to me, Mr. Holliday, they've been herded in bedded down sort of purposeful life. What do you mean? Uh, see the way they're strung out? Yep, bar T brand. Colder's marking all right. Yep, here they come riding up to us. Well, if there's going to be gunplay, I reckon it's might easier shooting from the cab of a locomotive than this from the seat of a stagecoach. What do you think they're up to, Jake? I well, can't say, Mr. Holliday, but I know Sam Colder can't be up to no good. Anyway, we'll find out soon enough. Here he comes. Carter. You sure look mighty pretty inside that tea kettle, Jake. Get your herd off in them tracks, Colter. I reckon I just can't, Jake. Why not, Colter? Well, you see, Mr. Railroad Man, my cows are sort of peculiar. They don't understand a mighty English. Ah, Jake, keep away from your gun, or you'll have a mighty short career nursing that prairie burner. Mr. Colter, I hope you're not going to keep that herd on the track until they learn the rudiments of English. Don't bandy words with him, Mary. Jake, Stop the locomotive. I'm warning you, Jake. You hit one of them cows. What do you expect us to do, Colter? Wait here until they make up their minds to move? I reckon if you don't fancy waiting, Mr. Railroad Man, you can back this rattler to Topeka. But I ain't moving that there hurt. Start the engine, Jake. I reckon that won't be necessary, Mr. Holiday. No, sir. What are you going to do, Jake? I'm going to practice on my little tutor, and if I know cows, they'll run and keep running till kingdom come. <laughs> Doggies go. Horse, oh, come on, they'll run us down. I wouldn't have forgotten the stick, Carter. Or you win the harder. Well, Mary, it looks like the cattlemen are beginning to change their ideas about railroads. 
After six months of running our little line, they're getting wise and beginning to ship their cattle by rail. Yes, I know. Isn't it wonderful? But, according to Jake, there's a reason for their change of mind. What reason? It's been this drought. The grass and the range has burned to a crisp. The streams are all dried up on the cattle trail to Abilene. I see. So they were forced to ship them by rail. Uh, what about our friend Sam Coulter? Coulter? <laughs> I guess he'd rather see his cattle die than send them over my railroad. Show some up, cut plug. Holder, what's the use of driving the poor critters any further? They ain't had a lick of water for two days. Look at them. They'll never make the market at Abel. Show some up, I say. Look here, boss. Why don't you do like I say if you don't? No, blast you, cut plug. I'd sooner see them cows dry up and bust and load them on a railroad. I won't have no truck with them blasted prairie burners, I tell you. You'll have to hog time me first. <laughs> That makes 722. That all cut, Plug? Reckon that's tally, Mr. Holliday. 722 head. Mm-hmm. Sure glad to see him bedded down in them cattle creeks. Yeah. And I'm glad the Coulter outfit finally came around. But where's Sam? I don't see him about. Sam? Well, skin me for a mule, I plum forgot. We uh, got him hog-tied in the chuck wagon. <laughs> Well, Mary, after six months of running our little railroad, we're beginning to show a profit. Yes, my dear, Topeka's in for a boom. At the cow business... Um, are you listening, my dear? Cyrus, that... that, that man. Huh? What man? Stop digging in that desk drawer and tell me. Mary, will you stop playing with that gun for the last you time? You don't need that gun, ma'am. Colder. Yeah, Colder. Tell your missus to set down a shooting iron holiday. I want to have a talk with you. Mary? Yes, dear. I, I'm putting it down. Well, Coulter, what can I do for you? I want to know what I'm owing you, Holiday, for shipping my cattle to Abilene. I, I won't be beholden to no railroad man. Well, I got your bill here, but I'd much rather you'd pay me off in goodwill. No, you won't have no more trouble for me, Holiday. I had to be hog-tied first, but I reckon I know when I'm licked, and come the next cattle run, I'll sign a contract right regular like. Can we shake on that, Coulter? Well, never shook hands with one before, but... You know, Holiday, for a railroad man, you ain't such a bad hombre after all. <laughs> shake, partner. Shake, partner. <laughs> and now, Mary, I think you can give Windy back his gun. Oh, must I, dear? Mary? Oh, uh, yes, darling. But it's such a pretty pearl-handled revolver. <laughs> Holiday lived to see his road go over the desert to Santa Fe, up over the mountain passes to Denver, down to the Gulf, east to Chicago, and west to the Pacific. He lived to see his 12 miles of road go to 12,000. His plans were opposed by some who, like Sam Coulter, thought his own interests were threatened. Yet his faith in his enterprise, the kind of faith that built America, not only carried the road through to its destination, but converted those opponents into supporters. So it has been many times in America, and so it'll be many times again, as it must, in a land that is dynamic and still growing. Here's Gain Whitman speaking for DuPont. The other day, I had some oil put in my car. While the man at the service station was pouring in the oil, I happened to pick up the can and read the label. Gee, I said to myself, this oil manufacturer claims a lot for his product. But then I realized, well, say, these aren't just claims. These are facts. Well, the oil companies wouldn't print them on the label along with their brands. Listen to some of the things a modern motor oil does. It has a detergent in it. 
what you and I might call a, a cleaner, that prevents carbon and sludge from dirtying up your engine. The oil you buy today tries to help keep your engine clean. Today's oil must operate under much higher temperatures and pressures than motor oil used to. But today it doesn't break down so quickly because it has been made more stable, stands more heat, and it runs more freely, even when the thermometer gets well down below zero. But perhaps the most striking improvement of all is that chemistry has developed compounds called lubricant assistants. When these are added to oil, this is the thing that seems unusual to me, they actually make it oilier. So I asked myself, there at the gas station as I looked at the label, how did all this happen? How did this lubricating oil we buy nowadays get to be so much better than the oil my dad used to buy for his car in, say, 1920? There are two answers, and they both begin with the letter C. Chemistry and competition. Years of scientific research in the laboratories of the oil companies and the laboratories of industrial chemical companies like DuPont have made oil better. Why have scientists done all this just to give you better oil for your car? I suppose partly because human beings are that way always trying to develop and improve things. But mainly because that other C, competition, leads businessmen to give you the best oil you can buy so that you'll continue to be satisfied customers and keep buying their products. The best oil or the best baking powder, the best refrigerator. That's the burr under the blanket of our American business system. Competition. Petroleum additives, helping to make modern lubricating oils as good as they are, deserve their place on the roster of the DuPont Company's Better Things for Better Living through chemistry. Next week, the DuPont Cavalcade brings you William Holden and Marsha Hunt in Builder of the Sioux. It's the true story of a man who had a wonderful dream and of the woman who stood by him until that dream came true. Charles Harley believed a canal could be built across the Great Lakes. So did Katie Bingham. They fought ignorance, bad weather, sickness, and financial problems. But they won out, and Harley built the Sioux Canal in two years instead of the ten that Congress set aside for this project. Be sure and listen next Monday at the same time to Builder of the Sioux, Starring William Holden and lovely Marsha Hunt on the Cavalcade of America. The music for tonight's DuPont Cavalcade was composed by Arden Cornwell and conducted by Donald Borey. Our Cavalcade play was written by Henry Walsh. In the cast with Ralph Bellamy and Louise Albritton tonight were Ted DeCourcy as Coulter, John Griggs as Wendy, Joseph Boland as Pete, Cameron Andrews as Jake, Walter Kinsella as Mike, and Ted Osborne as Cup Club. This is Ted Pearson inviting you to listen next week to William Holden and Marsha Hunt in The Builder of the Sioux on the Cavalcade of America, brought to you by the of Wilmington, Delaware. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.